Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome to a um, very special event. Uh, on behalf of the Romanian Embassy to the United States and the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York, I have the pleasure to welcome you to a very, very special event. In fact, to one of the highlights of our program this year. Uh, one of the highlights of our program last year. Uh, no, no, one of the highlights of our program for the past years. Because, let's be frank, when you have somebody like Norman Mania, uh, uh, a celebration of Norman Mania, it's a special event for any cultural institute and for any embassy no matter what the time and no matter, no matter uh, where the place. So we are very, very happy to host uh, tonight a uh, celebration of uh, one of the most uh, revered, one of the best known, one of the most acclaimed Romanian writers of them all, Norman Mane. to talk to um, Norman and uh, Cella about uh, this idea. You know, Norman and Cella are uh, very nice people, very generous, very uh, pleasant, very polite. But when we started to talk to them about this event, we started with an interdiction. Oh, no, 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 no. It wasn't the idea to organize an event like this. It was the fact that uh, by no means would we uh, utter the word anniversary or the figure 85. So this is not nothing, nothing related to an anniversary or nothing related to the anniversary of a great writer who turned 85 this year, but it's a, a celebration of um, a great author who magically after five decades of writing, after a life full of challenges, reinventions, tragedies, and triumphs, managed to stay young, managed to stay uh, alert, managed to stay uh, curious about everything that surrounds it. So this evening, uh, it's not an anniversary, but it's a tribute, it's a tribute to the youngest member of the audience, Norman Manea. We are uh, often organizing our events with the Romanian Embassy in, uh, in Washington, uh, and this event is no uh, different. We started to plan, to develop the, the idea, and to set up the event together with our uh, colleagues in Washington. And I, I must say that we have found uh, in, the, in the ambassador um, a uh, great supporter of this uh, event from the early stages, a great connoisseur uh, in everything related to Norman Mania, the man and the writer, and also somebody who being, of course, very busy as he has just started in Washington, somehow managed to find time to work with us on the very details of this special evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you His Excellency, Andrei Murad. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for, for being here, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, nice event tonight. So, <coughs> Mr. Dorian Brana, Director of the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York, Ambassador Jinga, 
Professor Doji Purpush, our beloved Norman Manev, dear Chela, dear friends. It is a sense of humility that I came here, as much as I can borrow from Norman Manev. He is the most translated and celebrated living Romanian writer, and yet is also one of the disinfatuated ones. Looking for ways to best describe Norman Manna, I came across one that I particularly resonate with. He's an oh, intellectual torn between mistrust of collective regimentation and nostalgia for belonging, and who wrote Paul Chernot in the volume In Honor. He lived to the worst barbarities of the 20th century. He was deported to a Transnistria concentration camp in Ukraine, where he experienced the darkness of Holocaust, and then lived under the repressive universe of communist Romania. But it seems absurd to shrink his spirit and literary value to the confines of victimhood. Even though he left the country in 1986 together with his wife, he continued to write in Romanian and in fact the flagship of his literary work the Hooligans Return was published after he left. His years of exile have translated in a search not for a place, but for a sense of place, as another of his friends puts it. The uniqueness of his style resides not only in the linguistic virtuosity that, the, that he unquestionably masters, but also in the lack of literary infatuation that accompanies his work and thoughts. He so generally describes life under communism as one of the, quote, apprentices in the penalties served pedagogically by daily life. And for all the reasons above, and for many that remain yet to be discovered, the fact that the main room of the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York will have his name is commensurate with his great stature, and we can call it the banality of daily life if we measure it as such. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, yeah, I know my colleagues have this um, um, talent in breaking the concentration. They do to me all the time, all the time, every day. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, no matter if you are a great artist, no matter if you are a uh, rich business person, no matter if you are a, um, I don't know, uh, somebody very important, <laughs> traveling during COVID uh, can be a big challenge. And one of the great admirers of uh, Norman Mania, uh, who wanted to share this uh, uh, extraordinary celebration uh, with us, is um, Andrei Novak, uh, Secretary of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, who coordinates the uh, cultural institutes uh, abroad. Uh, Andrei is um, a award-winning writer himself, so you can imagine his uh, disappointment, disappointment when he, he saw himself grounded in Bucharest, unable to participate in this event.
But he sent us a message, in fact, sent a message to uh, Norman, which I would like to read. But Andre asked me whether I could read it in both languages, uh, English and uh, the language uh, that Norman has never, has never left, uh, Romanian. Ladies and gentlemen, Norman Mane is not only one of the most important contemporary writers, he is a living conscience of the whole society, a spirit that defended and spurred the transmission of truth, but also the protection and promotion of Romanian language. Norman Mania is a universal personality who has spoken and is speaking in his works about the absolute values of Romania. His personality is part of the authentic heritage of Romanian values. His books are landmarks for the present and the future. For all the above, we thank him and assure him of our full appreciation. We believe that the value of his works is one of the most beautiful support for the argument that truth always wins. Happy birthday, Mr. Norman Mania, Andrei Novak, Secretary of State. And as promised, I'm going to read, read it in Romanian as well, faster. <laughs> Norman Manea nu este doar unul dintre cei mai importanti scriitori contemporani, este o conștiință vie a întregii societăți, un spirit care a apărat și a generat transmiterea, transmiterea adevărului, dar și pro, uh, protejarea și promovarea limbii române. Norman Manea este o personalitate universală, care a vorbit și vorbește în operele sale despre valorile absolute ale României. Personalitatea sa este o parte a patrimoniului valorilor românești autentice. Cărțile sale sunt repere atât pentru prezent cât și pentru viitor. Pentru toate acestea, îi mulțumim și îl asigurăm de întreaga noastră prețuire. Considerăm că valoarea operei sale reprezintă una dintre cele mai frumoase argumente, unul dintre cele mai frumoase argumente că adevărul învinge întotdeauna. La mulți ani, domnule Norman Mann. So this, e this evening is also the opening of a uh, photographic ex ex uh, photographic exhibition we entitled Norman Mania, A Life in Pictures. And uh, I urge you to see this exhibition, uh, which is um, hosted by the Brinkush Gallery, gallery our uh, newest gallery, because we believe that these pictures reveal something fundamental about uh, Norman Mann. We believe that, and I, I'm sure you will notice that too, they reveal his fundamental modesty, his luminous calm that uh, comes, probably comes, from uh, the, the idea that life is a gift, a gift that must be repaid in kindness and in goodness. Those pictures, extraordinary pictures, also reveal um, a sort of cult of friendship. As you will see that this man has been uh, admired, and is admired, uh, and loved by some of the most important writers in the world, some of the luminaries of intellectual life. And boy, some of them are such difficult persons and uh, still, Norman has managed to become their best friend, and they all adore him. At the same time, you would see in that uh, exhibition, in those pictures, you would see uh, Norman's, Norman's playfulness, uh, as if uh, Norman's lightness, as if 
he would like to envelop in humor the horror of this world, as if he would like to meet all the, you know, all things that are evil or not pleasant or disappointing with a joke, with a sense, uh, with a sense, with a man's sense of humor. But I would say, if looking at these pictures, last but not least, you would find in this picture, pictures, his great love for Jeff. You would find there that they are a sort of symbiotic couple. Indeed, the true oneness. And I think every homage to Norman Mania must necessarily be an homage to Cella Mania. Uh, and, an homage to her beauty, who has not faded away, a, a, an homage to her uh, will, to her patience, to her generosity. And I think you deserve all this. And Well, um, you can't find a, uh, um, a better person to give ones the contest and the um, the uh, the background and the uh, a deeper meaning of these pictures than uh, uh, Professor Claudio Turkus. Professor Claudio Turkus is the author of probably one of the best books ever written about Norman Mania. Uh, indeed, probably the ultimate, uh, the ultimate book on uh, Norman Mania, uh, which bears the apt uh, title, Norman Mania, The Aesthetics as East Ethics. You know, when uh, you would like to learn something about uh, Norman Mania's life and Norman and Cella are not around, you just call Claudio. <laughs> it's what we did, and here it is. Claudio Turpush, professor at the Papesh Boyer University in Romania. try to treat this, uh, to treat it like uh, like a kind of synthesis, a very brief one and a very simple one, but I hope a very accurate. And I'm trying to say in a few minutes why Jokman Manga is not only the most well-known Romanian writers in the United States, in Europe, uh, not only an essential capital uh, author of Romanian culture, an ambassador of Romanian literature, but why he is that kind of writer that cannot be missed in any kind of history of world literature. So I will, I will begin my, uh, my overview by quoting an important German philosopher, his name is Theodor Adorno, and he said, because this, this I would like to keep in mind, uh, this is the framework within I, I'm trying to argue that Norman is an essential 
writer of the map of world literature, not only in uh, the context of Romanian, European, or American literature. So, uh, Adorno said, art perceived strictly aesthetically is art aesthetically misperceived. When you look at art and literature in general, you're, you're, you're used to read it for the sake of literature. You, you want to read it because you like it. You want to read it because uh, you think it's a way of communicating meaning in a way that uh, no other kind of semiotic system could do. But art is also something that manifests itself in society. So this idea that we should look at art as being more than art, as having meanings beyond art itself, is the most important point uh, which I will use to argue my, my, my point. So Norman Mann's biography as a public intellectual and as a writer are fundamental not just for the history of Romanian literature and for the way how Romanian history of literature is written, but especially for the framework in which the complexity of some social, identity, political, aesthetic realities of the contemporary world are transferred from the East Central European cultural model to a globalist one. A child deported in Transnistria because he was Jewish, an engineer who became a world-class writer, it was written about him that he's a skeptical thinker and a sharp critic, critic of radicalisms of any kind. He was harassed before 89 for his inconvenient positions. And after emigrating in the United States, his writing provoked absurd appeals from different intellectual, intellectuals uh, because uh, he really continued to be a severe critic of all radicalism of all kind. So he was translated in, into over 25 languages by the most prestigious publishing houses. He has been honored with the most important global distinctions. This is somehow briefly said, just a short map of the first point, uh, you know, from the very distant perspective, why Norman Mane is so important. But I believe that uh, Norman Mann's transnational scope is based on two mechanisms specifics for exclusively. It is reserved for exclusively the great writers. The first aims to the aesthetic and anthropology, anthropological way in which his literature is articulated in relation to historical realities and political context. From this point of view, Mana's literature captures very coherently with each new book, and this is the main idea, the social totality to which it refers. In this respect, he develops a narrative vision in which the facts are mediated within a social network, impossible to be explained as atomized units independent of the processes of the society in which they manifest. From this perspective, society is not an innocent co sorry, collection of subjectivities, but forces individuals to adopt life forms that confirm and serve the social system uh, in which they manifest. So the first idea is that Norman is a great writer because he does something that all great writers could succeed to do. He's capturing writing fiction, a social totality, no matter if he writes about the child who is seeing the trauma or, or exposing his trauma in Transnistria, or uh, a mad char character who is uh, uh, living in Bucharest in, uh, in uh, socialist times, or when he is changing and, and shift the perspective and, and he's, uh, he's telling us about his own memory in Hooligan's Return. So capturing uh, uh, this totality, this social totality, means that his art is going beyond than being art. It's being an anthropological investigation, a document actually, 
of social memory, not only a personal uh, memory document, but a social one. So this is essential, uh, and uh, I, I developed this argument, uh, and I, I hope I, I, I proved that this is, this is true, uh, reading his, uh, his old books. Uh, the, second, the second point, the second one, is that the second mechanism that, that, uh, that is relevant for, for this, uh, for my point, is that uh, we don't have another author in Romanian literature capable, actually, of doing or, or generating uh, a, a real cultural global transfer. I will explain what I mean through this. So from this point of view, generated cultural transfer, Mana represents a special case of localism. And this is a concept in sociology of the 90s that describes the process by which local or regional concerns and themes are resized by the forces of globalization. Um, his writing situates, connects, and integrates regional social realities, circuits of identity, political debates or cultural trends, in a much broader network with a large scale relevance. From this point of view, Maya is both. When I think, uh, Maya is doing both with his artistic vision and with his intellectual model. Uh, he creates actually global relevance and global impact. So by capturing the social totality of the world he is referring to, which each book can also generate this transfer to his writing from a regional, local problem, making relevant that problem for a global context. That explains why we have Norman Maya as a writer who was uh, years and years uh, uh, discussed as being a real candidate for Nobel Prize. And maybe this is too theoretical, and, but I want to keep in mind these two ideas, that uh, we have to, to explain clearly why this is a great author. It is not a great author just because, uh, you know, uh, the paper, the newspaper says this. This could be proved scientifically. And this transfer could be explained and proved with all his uh, narrative and all his essays also, and all his civic engagement he uh, expressed uh, in the last 50 years. So uh, just, just a brief history of, of a few moments, and then I would conclude uh, this, this short overview. In the mid-60s, working as a young engineer based in Bucharest, Norman Mana devoted himself to writing short stories, which he then sent to the eccentric talent scout. His name was Miron Radu Paraskivescu, he was a writer, the chief editor of a small literary journal. The postcard the editor addressed by way of feedback to the young writer contained the following message. Dear comrade, I think your prose is, is, is exceptional. And aside from very small languages revisions, it might, be, it might be published in the future edition. This verdict came from a man who had held lunch, key names of course were Romanian literature, like, like Marin Preda, Mircea Ivanescu, Nora Iuga, or Radu Petrescu. During the 70s, Norman Mania was integrated in a group of Romanian writers uh, and they represented for him a true creative environment, but they didn't influence him too much in a literary sense. And if we go back in the 70s, the great critic Lucian Raiku and also a friend of Norman Mania said about him, quote, Norman Mania has invented a different way of writing. He has invented a language of his own a foreign language within the general vocabulary of his native tongue. So this kind of uh, somehow radical 
and also uh, very positive uh, observations if you read all the articles that Reich published, published about Norman Mania, you will have there a ground and solid uh, demonstration that this uh, invention of language is persistent, it's solid, it's consistent, and it's not just, it's not just a code in a public event. So uh, this struggle with Romanian language is an important argument also, uh, together with this uh, social total totality capture and also with the capacity of doing this globalist transfer I was referred to before. Uh, if we go further, actually, uh, to, to the, to the uh, 70s and to the 80s, uh, maybe we should, set, uh, uh, we should say a few things about the network of influence that influenced Norman Mania uh, and help him somehow generate this new language of his own. So, <clears throat> under normal circumstances, probably Norman Mania uh, would have become a Prussian writer. But his Kafkaesque biography drove him to create a contorted style for expressing a traumatic memory and strong social obsessions that were so outlined in his youth novels during the 70s. So these novels of the 70s few novels, uh, if, you, if you go there, a uh, few of them you have it in English, but all of them are in a beautiful uh, series of authors from, from Editura Polyron. Uh, it's very re relevant from, from developing this Kafka's uh, way of looking at the world. The diffuse network of influential masters could not leave out Robert Musil. To him, the Austrian writer, the big Austrian writer, to him we should add on account of their shared Bukovinian, Central European identity and Jewish roots, Max Blecher and Bruno Schulz, of course. They are indeed significant references for the universe of lost childhood, depicted in October 8 o'clock, a book from 89 short stories, a masterpiece. You have it in English, and I think everybody should, should read it if really wants to find out what does it mean to create the language and to capture the social totality using a child narrator who, is, who, 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 who was into a traumatic experience. Through its description of the death and dumb association the socialist underground, The Black Envelope, this is a seminal novel of the Romanian literature of the 80s, adds a subtle reference to Ernesto Sabato, who also allegorized the Argentinian military dictatorship. <laughs> also, the deep European component of Norman Mana's reflection is derived from Thomas Mann. And I quote here Professor Memoiano, who said, I have looked closely at your sentence structure. It partially comes from German. Mana's obses obsessions with analytical psychology betrays his affinity with Camille Petrescu, an important modernist writer in the uh, interbellum period and uh, also uh, another important network could be Eugenio Nescu uh, and Saul Bellow. These, these are very relevant because we can put not, uh, the, the books of Norman Maga in context, in a, world literary, in a world literature context. But the most important is to keep in mind this uniqueness of, of the language, of the Romanian language, because all the literary universe of Norman Mania is written and developed in Romania. Of course, there are some essays in English, but uh, we have it also in Romania and uh, rewrite it. So, I would just try to conclude uh, in one minute and saying that scoring the humanity of the humankind, like the prophets of centrifugal humanity, Kafka, Joyce, Thomas Mann, and Conrad, Mania does not resonate with the mystic prophet Elijah, nor does decide with the laments of the prophet Jeremiah faced with the rebellion of Israel. The poetic messianism of the prophet Isaiah is foreign to him. He does borrow, however, something from the character and consistency of the exiled prophet Daniel, who seemed strange to the Babylonians because he was a Jew and he was suspicious to the Jews 
because he had become so relevant in Babylon. And I was using this metaphorical talking about Norman because, uh, of course, Jewishness is one of his theme, but uh, it's just a theme that is subordinated to the experience of literature. Uh, and Norman's identity is beyond any kind of identity as a writer and a, as a public intellectual. It's beyond any kind of ethnic determination, linguistic determination, political determinations, and so on and so forth. Because this experience of literature lived him and placed him on this map of the world literature where it's his true place. So I will just quote a fragment, my conclusion of my book finished 10 years ago in November, uh, which at this moment tried to capture all the important elements of, uh, of Norman Mayer. An anti-political writer in your comrade's sense of the term, it's a book from 84, Manet is also a practitioner of the Central European strand of skepticism depicted by Václav Havel in his famous Anatomy of Renaissance, a book from 85. A reclusive Herzog with the solid formation of a tenacious Kumbo, an Athenian who leaves aesthetic research at the crossroads to become, quote, son of the Hebrews, unquote a fluid theorist of interiority, an artisan of Wagner, a lucid mediator on psychological alienation, a symptomatologist of his own memory, a refined performer of the burlesque, an unyielding apologist of honesty, a sensitive collector of vulnerabilities, an agnostic obsessed with uncertainty, and the cosmopolitan skeptic who has stayed true to Romanian language. For all this, Norman Mania belongs to the exclusive, and I'm very careful with words, to the exclusive group and category of creators whose literary creativity is fundamental for the context of East European cultural geography and for the globalist late modernity of world literature. Without his writings, the map of world literature will lose probably a very valuable and for all of us a very loved territory. First time as an MC, you know, I'm happy that I don't have to make an abstract of what the previous um, speaker said. I don't know whether I can pronounce this uh, uh, concept rather than understand. But thank you, Claudio. I think that was a very. I think you, you have a PhD actually. <laughs> uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Claudio. This is uh, probably the most knowledgeable. Um, person in, uh, in Romania about uh, Norman Smania's uh, um, work and uh, you, you could, uh, you could uh, tell. Of course, uh, I urge you to, um, to read the book. It was published by Peter Lang in 2016. It has uh, a fantastic documentation, hours and hours of uh, conversation with uh, Norman, uh, years spent in the Norman Mania ar archives, uh, a lot, a lot of uh, interviews with uh, friends and peers. So it's a fantastic documentation. It's really, really something that uh, that you must look into. Uh, in um, 2012, I think it was, um, Norman uh, Mania was received uh, in the exclusive um, Royal Society of Literature in the UK. Uh, it was the first Romanian author to have been received in this uh, very exclusive club of great, uh, great writers. 
And uh, the ceremony of this, um, uh, of this uh, event, which is very uh, dignified, as you may, uh, as you may, um, uh, may imagine, it's in Britain, right? Um, uh, took place at the Romanian house uh, in the posh part of uh, London, uh, a palatial, uh, a palatial uh, house shared by the Romanian Cultural Institute and by the Romanian Embassy in the UK. And uh, that is how we, I as a um, uh, director of the Romanian Cultural uh, Institute, uh, together with the ambassador at the time, had the pleasure to host this uh, this very, very uh, interesting event. And uh, I have the pleasure to, uh, to say that that ambassador, the Romanian ambassador to the UK, is here with us tonight. And it is my pleasure to pass the floor to Ambassador uh, Dr. Ion Jinga, the Romanian ambassador, the Romanian permanent representative to the United Nations, to say a few words. Ambassador. Well, thank you, Doro. And uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for inviting me the good old times uh, of, uh, of London. Because uh, Professor Kukush, Professor Murado, Director Brana, have spoken about Norman Mana as a writer, I'll try to say a few words about how I perceive him and I continue to do as a human being. Well, uh, in fact, I have first met him through one of his books in 2006. At that time I was, I was much younger, of course. I was ambassador to Brussels. And uh, it happened that my daughter has offered to me as a gift, as a present to my birthday, The Hooligans Return. It was in French, the book in fact it was published first I think in 2003, uh, but it was translated into French in 2006 uh, with the title Le Retour du in V. So, uh, because the book came from my daughter, I read it. <laughs> After reading that book, I had first a bit of sweet feeling, and then the strong desire to meet the author. In fact, I think uh, Norman has, has mentioned in, in one of his interviews that his intention was to, to write The Hooligan's Return with ink, but it happened that it was written in blood. Then, um, some years after, I think, yeah, indeed, in 2012, we met again in London at the time. I was ambassador to the United Kingdom. And uh, that time it was an in-person meeting without a mask, of course. <laughs> you know, his, um, his writing is not very much different from himself as a person. I would say, without trying to duplicate what the other speakers have already mentioned, that his, his thinking is very sharp, it's very vivid. But at least from my point of view, and above all, he's a good man. 
Romanian. I don't know how many of you speak or, or understand Romanian. But in Romanian, we, we say about good man, eu nu cum se cade. Which means, it's a person honest, nice, and reliable. It was already mentioned that almost all of his writings were are in, in Romania. And uh, I think no one uses to, to say quite often that Romanian language is his homeland. But interesting enough, most of, of the people who populate his books feel strangers in their homeland. And uh, I try to understand why. I, I found uh, in one of his articles, he quoted Emil Choran, who once said, without hell, no illusions. I think the article is blasphemy and carnival, if I'm not wrong. Then, I noticed that about Mikhail Sebastian, he once said that Sebastian was vulnerable to friendship. <laughs> well, uh, with all due respect, Norman, I think you too, you are vulnerable to friendship. And for all of this, I admire and I love Norman Mann. Thank you. in uh, One Belgrade Square, as was the address of the Romanian House in London, Norman signed his acceptance to become part of this exclusive club with the pen that used to belong to Charles Dickens, uh, with an extraordinary overwhelmed by the sentiment of respect. I touched that pen after Norman has signed. And I think something magical happened that over the years, here I am, hosting an event with Norman Vanya. There's something magical, it was, you know, it was the true, I would say, the true magic of promotion. London, New York City. Uh, so I will touch it again. <laughs> so um, um, for many years, uh, you know, um, uh, Norman Mania has been a uh, professor of um, literature and um, European culture at uh, Bard College. Um, and um, one of the, uh, the personalities that would have wanted to share this uh, event with us is the, the president of uh, Bard uh, College, uh, Leo Botstein, but he is um, um, unfortunately, not uh, not in um, in the United States, but uh, I have um, the pleasure to invite um, Jim uh, Ottaway Jr., also a professor at uh, Bard College and um, a member of the advisory board of a um, center for uh, civic engagement at uh, Bard College to uh, deliver uh, President Bobstein's uh, message. Thank you for that introduction and that promotion to professor. <laughs> I'm just a trustee there. And uh, speak for Leon, who is uh, tonight in Vienna. Uh, he asked me to give his um, statement of love and affection for you, Norman, um, from a man, Leon Botstein, who's a great admirer and a great benefactor of Norman, by inviting him to come and 
teaching guard for 20 years and become a, one of the great characters on the campus where I got to know him. This is Leon speaking from Vienna. I'm terribly sorry that I cannot be present at this tribute to Norman Minea, but you will understand my reason. Central European University, which was founded in 1991 as a beacon of hope for post-communist Europe, is holding its annual board meeting this weekend, and I, as the chair, must be there, especially after this difficult era of pandemic. Norman will remember the optimism of the early 90s and the rhetoric of progress and impending paradise. Those were sentiments Norman never shared. Not because he is a misanthrope or a fatalist, but because he is a realist with an affection and tolerance for human frailty. Like Balzac, Norman Manet possesses the unique gifts that great writers must display. These include the ability to see what is hidden find pleasure in the ordinary, to resist a rush to judgment, and the ability to laugh and smile and to detect how the absurd can masquerade as the rational. Norman Manea came to Bard in 1989 at the recommendation of Mary McCarthy and Philip Roth. He has made an unforgettable contribution to the culture of the college both in and outside of the classroom. He became the Francis Florney Professor in European Studies and Culture, a post from which he retired in 2017. Norman Manea, one of Bard College's most distinguished faculty members and literary luminaries, together with his wife, Chella, became friends of my entire family. Norman and I traveled together to Bucharest. I've always regretted that I cannot appreciate firsthand the beauty and the originality of his command of his beloved Romanian language. A survivor of Nazism and fascism, and therefore of the murderous intent to eliminate Jews from the face of the earth, Norman shared the fate of my parents and their children. He is among the most eloquent and wise representatives of a small surviving remnant of European Jewry. He is one of the very few among us who is irreplaceable. Therefore, in the spirit of admiration and friendship, I salute Norman and thank him and Shella for their presence among us. these kind words. Um, I think now it's time uh, we um, open the floor. I'm, I'm sure that our friend of Norman Mana who would like to say a few words. Uh, this is an evening of uh, uh, reminiscence. This is an evening of evocation. This is a, an evening of uh, saying thank you to this uh, extraordinary right. Uh, Raluca, you have uh, a message, right? Robert Boyers. Though until this morning, Papers and I planned to attend this week weekend celebration of Norman Mana, and we are heartbroken to miss it. I did want to add my voice to the chorus that will surely rise and swell over these two November days. Of course, Norman is one of the world's leading writers and it has been moving to observe in recent years how fully he is treasured as well by his Romanian colleagues. For those of us who teach his books and write about his work, the weekend celebration and ceremony seem an entirely fitting and magnificent tribute. From afar, we lift our glasses to the most brilliant and humane of hooligans and as well to his brilliant and radiant wife, Chalamana. Uh, yes, 
Need some? Yeah. Would you like to step here? Because I saw you have uh, some papers there, right? Uh, so. to be uh, at his level, but when I saw that it was almost impossible, I became number two. I absorbed like a sponge everything that he shared with me. I followed his guidance. He molded me and he taught me for life. He did the same with our daughter. He was reading to her from Nietzsche when she was five and constantly being after her to do something. And every time Norman and Shella were in our place, Norma would tell Hari, Lasso, nu-i mai frecat o atâta pitnicia. It is an expression in Romania that can be translated literally, but it means a sterile furnace. Leave the kid alone, don't bother her anymore. <laughs> Hari Sam had a best friend in Romania, another very talented writer, Sorin Tita. And when Sorin Kittel would send somebody to Hari, Hari knew that the person is a person of exception. He immediately met with him, and he started thinking, how can he help him? But first, he wanted to read his book. Norman Mania gave him a book. Hari read it, came home, gave it to me, and he said, it's great, read the book. <laughs> Both of us, happy that Sorin sent us another wonderful talented man. We immediately invited them and to invited him and his wife to dinner. The day that they were invited to come to us for dinner, Hari called from his office Philip Roth. He didn't know him, but knew that Philip helped writers from the Eastern European bloc and told him about Norman Mania, the Romanian writer and about his incredible talent, and that he's coming tonight for dinner tonight, that he's coming to us, and if it would be all right to call him, Philip, Philip on the phone, and put them together. Philip agreed. So at the first dinner, Harry called Philip Roth, forced Norman 
to talk on the phone that she said in class and nobody knows English. So Norman and Philip spoke in Yiddish from our house. They talked and they talked and they talked and then they met and they became friends for life. And this is what he says. Uh, 
this is now still the interview we're talking. There will sh surely be more referring to books, but how many more doesn't appear to bother him? He believes the readership for serious literature will dwindle away to smaller and smaller numbers until readers become a cult. Let me tell you an anecdote he offered. I have a Romanian friend named Norman Mania, who's a writer. And Norman has been a friend of mine since he left Ceausescu's Romania. He lived there through the worst of the dictatorship, and they harassed him at every turn, and he couldn't get published. So he went to see a friend who was an elderly writer he respected. And he began to complain about the fact that he had no readers. And his friend, to him, and his friend said to him, how many readers does a writer, does a writer need? Four. That's all you need is four readers. You, unfortunately, have two. <laughs> and at that, the dead pan Philip Roth burst into laughter, and I happily joined in. <laughs> He'd love to be here tonight. And so far after all these important people spoke, it's kind of this atmosphere is quite stiff compared to other events that I've been invited or joined with Norman uh, and Chela for big celebration events. Because the stiffness I understand 
it derives from our modest, our intimidation, our humbleness in Buddha, a master of life, master of literature. And I was asking myself, if I have to say one word to Norman or to the audience of Norman or friends of Norman, what I should say at this moment? And I try to think very hard because that's often forced me to give a very deep understanding and conclusive definition of Norman's uh, uh, position, presence in our society. And I would say, eventually I came up with this, last master standing, last man standing on mm -hmm. our planet, especially during the, this real pandemic. I, um, because we talk about the professor, talking about Norman's work in the academic way. Some people talk about it as a reader. But Norman's way beyond all this. Uh, Norman went through a lot of different social realities than anyone of us. And, but where is Norman greatness? We all sense that Norman, this, this is not an ordinary writer. But we, why is it special? It's very hard for people to clearly give a broad, comprehensive conclusion of why Norman is special. I, I'm only trying to my efforts here. First of all, I think the Norman's deep understanding of the humanity is beyond anyone, at least in this room or in society in general. Simply because he lived through his life in trajectory, already defined his uniqueness, living through in the life at least the three social systems on the different social uh, realities. That's already unique. Communism, of fascist, Nazi, communism, and then capitalism, and then postmodern, whatever. And then Norman, in this exile, his exile started much earlier than anyone else. We are all immigrants in this country, but Norman's uh, exile, immigration, is different from us because that is from profound sense of sense of belonging to this planet. Now with the pandemic, people say we have no place to go, we have no place to hide. But Norman faced that reality many years when he was very, very young and throughout his life. That makes him very, very unique. His understanding and to the gut feeling about exile, about no sense of belonging, is much profounder than any of us. Then, uh, Norman's courage, courage in facing the difficult tragedy of life is beyond anyone of us, I think, has experienced. This uh, tragedy is not only personal or political, war or you know, political turmoil or transformation. It's also, do you, after all this, do you still have the courage to move on? I have to say, I myself often feel vulnerable or on the verge of giving up. My life was relatively much peaceful, and yet I have to struggle. Just imagine the way long went through. So this courage and this strength to keep moving, I think Norman is beyond much more superior than the Superman Nietzsche uh, defined. Uh, uh, Nietzsche said Superman, but Norman not only uh, overcome the nihilism, but become a giant, yet remain human and in touch with reality. And in our Chinese uh, context, the which you can see it, that means you always rooted yourself deep down to the planet. So in that sense, Norman is very unique. And Norman kept his human, modest, humorous, and uh, compassionate way towards underdogs. And so this is another uniqueness of Norman. But Norman's courage and honesty in face of the human reality in his hooligan, when he talked about his own life, he's not denouncing, or not only denouncing those evils and ugliness of humanity, but he is capable of facing himself. His own little bit of the soul, his dark side, sometimes critical, or his bright joy, he literally, honestly presented to us. And in that way, intentional or unintentional, he preserved a true presentation, more than historians. My late husband was a great historian himself, so the history, sense of history, was deeply also in our consciousness. But in Norman's sense, 
he used literature and his own writings to present a part of the humanity, human inner life that historians are unable to produce. So in that sense, Lomar is a very unique. So I can go on like this, but I want to say, um, Lomar, you remain so fresh, so in general, if you would like, your laughter are still like a baby that uh, endures so much of ourselves in our know, difficult time. And when we see you, we feel we have strength, we have hope. Because someone who went through so much and yet still keep moving on, we have no reason to give up. So Norman, thank you for your existence <laughs> and to be with us. And I hope you will be producing a lot of works. But the last news is Norman's uh, another round of books are launching in China. And uh, the editors, publishing houses, were very excited to know that I'm coming to Norman's events, asking me to collect every single piece of the information in that, that I can about Norman and Michelle and their work and their <coughs> community. And also, I think, Norman, you unintentionally became a guide, guidance to human life. I thank you, and I'm very, very humbled by you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm afraid it's uh, time passes so uh, so fast, and there is one uh, important moment to um, to um, um, observe this uh, evening. The um, dedication of this room to Norman Malia. So the room will bear the name of Norman Malia, so we'll have to do this gesture. But before that, before that, of course, uh, without any introduction, because all the excellent introductions have been done already, let's put our hands together and welcoming the great man himself, Norman Malia. You are very tired. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what to do. I wrote down a few lines, but it's late. You are tired. I am tired. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if we shouldn't go to see a movie. Maybe it's possible to see a movie at another time. Look. You should tell me if I should read what I wrote down yeah, in my yeah, yeah. You are very courageous, I would say, and you may regret it, <laughs> but it's no problem. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of you and thank very much to the people who already spoke. And you spoke wonderfully about me, my family, <coughs> my biography, all these uh, little details, let's say. I'm also very grateful, as you may assume, no, you can only take my soul. No. <laughs> so, uh, my uh, very dear ambassador, is it working? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Andre Moral was instrumental and extraordinary in supporting this event and supporting myself after they, our very first meeting, which was the very first meeting in our biography. Who is going? Has left. Has left the building. That's good. It's good news. Uh, and also Mr. Branya, 
the director of this crazy, wonderful institute, the microphone guy. which is called the Culture Institute. Now, I don't know how much we will enjoy this word, but it's a word which is in great, great danger in our time. More than in any other time, at least in my, in my biography. And here I will read a few lines. Our festivity is a daily reaffirmation of the vital role of culture and creativity, even in <coughs> and especially in periods of dark aggressions of evil. We are living now in a very unsettling time of old new uncertainties, challenges, and dangers all around the planet, including my former homeland, Romania, and the Bukovina province of woods and beauty, as well as my new residence here in the global capital of exile, New York, and in fact, in the entire disturbed planet, aggressed by manipulation of populism, old new resentments, savage explosions of hatred and hostility, nostalgia for top leadership of totalitarian tendencies. All of this which I mentioned, and which you certainly know very well, as well as I know, are subverting any authentic moral debate that remains essential, in my opinion, to a spiritual re evolution, or revolution, whatever you would prefer. Your presence here and now fortifies still our belief in vital hopes for dignity and solidarity. As you can see, the laureate of this event is not more a young man. <laughs> He's complicated <coughs> and sometimes even burdened by organs experience the dark periods of oppression and despair, but also followed a stubborn persistence for a more normal and even promising time. I should add now, in a more personal note, related to my biography, my evolution, that changing a practical profession as I have, for a dreamy evasion into fantasy and fiction, surrendered by books and their wandering questions, proved to be still, and proves now to be still, in my opinion, a worthy spiritual adventure. Let's recall now the saying of a famous Romanian exile who lent his great name to the neighboring group here at the New York Cultural Institute. I mean, 
the great Konstantin Bernkusch, who claimed that you are not anymore a child. The artist in you is dead. I really <coughs> don't know how much of an artist I still am. But childishness always played and still plays an important role in my life, in my entire biography. I have here a trustworthy witness, my dear wife, who often said in our more than 50 years of complicit fraternity <laughs> that I am still a boy. <coughs> a boy of 11 years old. So I assume to be entitled now to advise all of you in my role as a celebrated spoiled brat <laughs> to take a playful break with Romanian wine and American dishes. It's here somewhere. Thank you all for coming.